Number 1. Look at the picture marked Number 1 in your test book. A. She's wearing protective clothing. B. She's buying a new hat. C. She's storing food in jars. D. She's dressing for a party. Number 2. Look at the picture marked number 2 in your test book. A. The water glass is empty. B. The swimmers are racing. C. The man is cleaning the pool. D. The guest is relaxing by the pool. Number 3. Look at the picture marked number 3 in your test book. A. The man is putting the suitcase into the trunk. B. The woman is walking behind the man. C. The couple is getting out of the car. D. The bags are being weighed. Number 4. Look at the picture marked number 4 in your test book. A. She's closing the notebook. B. She's filling out a form. C. She's checking the bookshelves. D. She's cleaning the table. Go on to the next page. Number 5. Look at the picture marked number 5 in your test book. A. The cord is being cut. B. The telephone booth is on the corner. C. The woman is on the phone. D. The tourist is studying the map. Number 6. Look at the picture marked number 6 in your test book. A. The panes are in the frames. B. The planes are at their gates. C. The trains are in the station. D. The cranes are on the wharf. Number 7. Look at the picture marked number 7 in your test book. A. He's trying to catch a mouse. B. He's holding a pad of paper. C. He's examining his eyes. D. He's working at his computer. Number 8. Look at the picture marked number 8 in your test book. A. The ferry is crossing the water. B. The passengers are boarding at the pier. C. The sailboat is in the harbour. D. The tanker is in dry dock. Go on to the next page. Number 9. Look at the picture marked number 9 in your test book. A. The customers are waiting for a table. B. The people are reading their newspapers. C. The library is open at night. D. The menus are being printed. Number 10. Look at the picture marked number 10 in your test book. A. He's pouring a cup of coffee. B. He's emptying his pockets. C. He's spilling the liquid. D. 
He's brewing a pot of coffee. Part 2. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear a question or statement spoken in English, followed by three responses, also spoken in English. The question or statement and the responses will be spoken just one time. They will not be printed in your test book, so you must listen carefully. You are to choose the best response to each question or statement. Now listen to a sample question. You will hear... Why are you late? A. I hope I won't be. B. My car broke down. C. He always is. The best response is choice B. My car broke down. Therefore, you should choose B. Eleven. What time is your flight? A. Next week. B. Four in the morning. C. I'm usually on time. Twelve. Where are you going? A. In about ten minutes. B. With John and Sally. C. To the shops. Thirteen. Who lives in that house? A. Yes, I do. B. It has three bedrooms. C. My brother Billy. Fourteen. What's wrong with the telephone? A. It doesn't seem to be working. B. There's a message for you. C. I'll call you later. Fifteen. Did you enjoy the film? A. I'm sure we will. B. Sometimes I do. C. Very much. Sixteen. What's the name of the cafe you go to? A. Yes, that's the one. B. It's called the Black Cat. C. It's not that far. Seventeen. When is Brian's birthday? A. Is it really? B. Here's a present for you. C. Sometime next week. Eighteen. Who can type this letter for me? A. I have a stamp here. B. Would you like some paper? C. I can do it when I finish this report. Nineteen. Will the meeting be held in the director's office? A. That's what the memo said. B. No, in about an hour's time. C. It's the first street on the left. Twenty. You're Mrs. Brown's new assistant, aren't you? A. I don't need any help, thank you. B. Of course I can assist you. C. No, I work for Mr. Davis. Twenty-one. Will you take a picture of us? A. I didn't take it. B. Certainly. C. I can't draw to save my life. Twenty-two. Do you want the steak or the chicken? A. It's not in the kitchen. B. I'll have steak or beer. C. They both sound good. Twenty-three. Do you know why David is late? A. He's late as usual. B. Almost an hour. C. Maybe he missed the bus. Twenty-four. 
24. Are you ready to order now, sir? A. Just give me a minute. B. I'll happily take your order. C. That's a good choice. Twenty-five. Are there any messages for me? A. I didn't say anything. B. Yes, what is it? C. One from the bank. Twenty-six. Would you like to join us for a game of tennis? A. We'd be delighted. B. We joined last week. C. That was a great game. 27. How long have you lived at your present home? A. I've been looking for ages. B. Ever since I was a child. C. You shouldn't have bought me a present. 28. That's Ben's briefcase, isn't it? A. It sure is. B. It's not that brief. C. If you insist. 29. Is this blue coat on sale? A. I've got a blue coat. B. I don't like sailing. C. Yes, it's half price. 30. Who's the new secretary? A. In the main office. B. Yes, she's very efficient. C. Her name is Janet Swinton. 31. Is the food prepared? A. I'm ready. B. Yes, it's on the table. C. Unfortunately, it's broken. 32. How about going to the theater for a treat? A. The doctor said the treatment was successful. B. It's just next to the hospital. C. That's a great idea. 33. Did you finish the report yet? A. I don't like watching the news. B. Not quite. C. She's a good reporter. 34. Are you hungry? A. Only because you annoyed me. B. I'm starving. C. I'm not in a hurry. 35. Do you have a cold? A. It was freezing today. B. He's not that old. C. I've had one for a few days. 36. Can you tell me where to get a cab from? A. The fare was quite expensive. B. To the train station. C. Outside the shopping mall is best. 37. How did you get to college today? A. I wrote a letter of application. B. On my bike. C. It was a good lecture. 38. Don't you just love this song? A. No, I'm not a fan of hers. B. I'm having singing lessons. C. I'm not in love. 39. When did this letter arrive? A. Earlier this morning. B. I'm still waiting for it. 
C. The mail is always late. Forty. Whose bag is this? A. It's a brown one. B. John took your bag. C. It's mine. Part 3. Directions. You will hear some conversations between two people. You will be asked to answer three questions about what the speakers say in each conversation. Select the best response for each question and mark the letter A, B, C, or D on your answer sheet. The conversations will not be printed in your test book and will be spoken only one time. Questions 41 through 43 refer to this conversation. Hi, I'm sorry I'm late. The traffic on 35E was impossible. Really? But it's not even rush hour. I know, but it's summertime and there's a lot of construction. Well, anyway, I suppose we shouldn't waste any more time. We've got a lot of work today before the big presentation tomorrow. Oh, I cannot wait until it's all over and done with. I have such a fear of public speaking. What's there to be afraid of? You know the material better than anyone in the class. It's all mental. It has nothing to do with the material. But whenever I stand up in front of other people, I start trembling. My mouth goes dry, I start stuttering, and I also fidget with my hands. Now you're making me nervous. We better practice a lot. Certainly the content is more important than delivery. But people need to understand what you are saying. Okay. Let's finish putting together the last of the pages for the PowerPoint presentation, and then we'll rehearse until it's perfect. If I say the presentation enough times, I think the words will flow easier tomorrow. Okay. Let's get cracking. 41. What is the reason for the traffic on 35E? Forty-two. What is at fault for the woman's nervousness? Forty-three. What, according to the man, is the most important part of the presentation? Questions 44 through 46 refer to this conversation. Joan, have you seen the night file? It was on my desk this morning, and now it is nowhere to be found. I think Meredith said she wanted to look it over before the meeting with the administrators tonight. Well, where is Meredith? I haven't seen her for a while now. I think she's out for a few hours. She said something about meetings at the other office. I'm not sure to tell you the truth. I'll have to call her on our cell, and I really need that file. I need to have it memorized by the meeting tonight, and I haven't even glanced at it yet. Okay, call her. But be warned, she always turns her phone off when she's in meetings. Oh, no. Well, I suppose it's my own fault for saving it until the very last moment. She probably assumed that I had already looked at it, considering it's been in my possession for the last three days. So what are you going to do if you don't get a chance to read it? Wing it, I guess. And let Meredith do most of the talking. 44. Why does the man want to find Joan? 45. What is the man upset about? 46. What will the man probably do at the meeting tonight? Questions 47 through 49 refer to this conversation. How did the interview go? Do you feel confident? I honestly have no idea what to think about the interview. What do you mean? I was extremely nervous. My palms were sweaty and I stuttered on almost every question. You don't strike me as the type of person who gets flustered. I usually don't. But this man was so intimidating. He has such an arrogant presence to him. After the question, he leaned back in his chair and crossed his arms as if he had just 
dared me to answer a question and expected me to fail. I'm sure that was just his strategy. He probably wanted to observe how you handled pressure. It really threw me off guard. I really wish I could have come off as more confident. Well, don't forget that the decision is not entirely dependent on the interview. You have an outstanding academic record. You did an impeccable job on your application, and I have no doubt that your references will sing your praises to them as well. 47. What effect did the interviewer have on the man? Forty-eight. What, besides the interview, could help the man get the job? Forty-nine. What is the woman's opinion? Question 50 through 52 refer to this conversation. Ah, uh, here it is. Carousel A. And it says right here on the monitor that this has the luggage for Flight 532 arriving from New York. It sure is crowded here. We're going to have to really push and shove to get to our luggage. Well, we don't have to be at the convention center for another three hours, and both the hotel and the center are only minutes away from the airport. What do you say we go and get some coffee over at that coffee stand in the corner? That's a good idea. We can let the crowd die out a little bit and then come claim our luggage. Plus, I'm falling asleep. I could really use a caffeine kick. Let's go then. My treat. You don't have to do that. Let me get it. No, I insist. Consider it a small thank you for letting me ride with you to the airport this morning. Okay, but I'll get the coffee on the way back. Deal. 50. Where are the two individuals? 51. Why are they going to get coffee? 52. Why does he want to pay for the coffee? Questions 53 through 55 refer to this conversation. Excuse me, is this Dr. John Evans' office? It sure is. Do you have an appointment? No, actually. His name was given to me by a colleague. I've been suffering from insomnia for the last few months. I've gone to MDs and taken herbs, and nothing seems to work. I thought a psychologist might help me work through the stress that is causing the insomnia. That sounds like a reasonable solution to me. Now, Dr. Evans is booked every day, so I'm afraid you can't see him without an appointment. I figured that much. I just came to the actual office instead of calling because I was in the area. Can I make an appointment with you then? Definitely. We'll schedule you first for a half-hour consultation. After that consultation, Dr. Evans will suggest how often you should come and we'll schedule accordingly. That sounds good. When can I get an appointment? Usually he's booked for weeks straight, but fortunately for you, he just had a cancellation for this Friday at 2. Can you make it? I'll be there. 53. Who referred the woman to Dr. Evans? 54. Why does the woman want to be Dr. Evans' patient? 55. When will she actually see Dr. Evans? 56-58 Questions 56 through 58 refer to this conversation. Are you just getting back from work now? It's late. I know. I had the greatest day, though. You are the only person I know who comes back from 14 hours of work and calls it a great day. Well, this new job is very exciting for me. It's the first time I'm doing something I actually love, and I am talented at. So, why was it such a great day? My boss let me sit in on a meeting with the Calvin Klein designer, which I take as a sign that she is preparing me to have more responsibilities in the future. Mm, I think that is a safe assumption. Also, I told her I liked a certain design, and she ordered a ton of it. It sounds like you are really earning the respect of your boss, and quickly, too. You have accomplished a lot in just two months on the job. 56. 
According to the man, what is unique about the woman? Fifty-seven. What does going to the Calvin Klein meeting probably mean for the woman? Fifty-eight. Why did the boss order a lot of a particular design? Questions 59 through 61 refer to this conversation. Are you leaving for home already, Ed? It's only 3.30. I know, but I've been here since 7. Why the sudden change of schedule? I've never known you to be an early bird. I'm definitely not, and I'm somewhat sleep-deprived. But my son is in the state soccer tournament, and I can't miss any of his games. You are such a dedicated father, and an employee at that. I'm not nearly as efficient as you are in the office, but the first thing I do when I come home is take a nap. I don't know how you have the energy to work full-time and have a family. Well, I wasn't up to it at your age, that's for sure. This is only your first year on the job. It takes a while to get a rhythm. Once you're settled here, you'll find you'll have more energy for other aspects of your life. I promise. Okay, I better go. I can't miss kickoff. Have fun and good luck to your son. 59. Why is it acceptable for Ed to leave at 3.30? 60. What does the woman admire about the man? 61. How does the man reassure the woman? 62 through 64 refer to this conversation. Adam, hi. What are you doing here? Since you weren't answering any of your calls, I thought I'd make a home visit. I know, I'm sorry. I know you are looking for this week's column, and I know I'm past deadline. It's just that I had some family things come up this week, and I'm a little behind schedule. Jenny, you are always past deadline. And although, as your editor, that used to stress me out a lot, I've grown accustomed to it the last few years. Well, then what is this about? Is something wrong? Well, a publishing company contacted me a week ago with an interest in turning your columns into a book. I promised to set up a meeting between you and them by the end of the week, but then again, I didn't expect you to be avoiding my calls for seven days straight. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. But they are starting to think that you are not serious. I've set up a meeting for today at four. Can you make it? Of course. 62. Where does this conversation take place? 63. What has a man gotten used to? 64. What does the publishing company want to meet with a woman about? Questions 65 through 67 refer to this conversation. As I said over the phone, I've been an accountant for the last 10 years and have recently quit my job. I want to find a career that I'm passionate about. And what provoked your interest in advertising? Well, there's still a lot for me to learn about the field but it seems to grant me the opportunity to exercise both my creativity and my intelligence. That is certainly true. And there is actually an opening at the agency. Honestly? What position is it? It's an unpaid internship. It will allow you to dabble in the various aspects of the advertising world, so you can find a specific area that suits you best. Also, it will allow you to develop a strong portfolio. But did you say unpaid? Well, yes. Remember, you are starting a new career, so you're going to have to start at the bottom and work your way up. It will be years until you make what you were making at your old job. 65. Why does the man want to be in advertising? 
66. According to the woman, why should he get the job at the agency? 67. What is the man concerned about? Questions 68 through 70 refer to this conversation. Do you think James will get the promotion? He definitely has a good chance and certainly deserves it. But remember, Paul is the boss's nephew, and he is also up for the job. But Cindy is a fair boss. She would never promote someone who was less qualified just because they were family. I don't think she would do it consciously, but it may play some role in her decision-making. I mean, it's not like Paul is completely unqualified for the position. If Paul and James are neck and neck for the position, Paul certainly has the edge. Well, James will just be wrecked if he doesn't get it. He's been working so hard. Let's just hope for the best. 68. What might hinder James's chance at the job? 69. What does a woman think about Paul? 70. What does the man know about Paul? 4. Directions. You will hear some talks given by a single speaker. You will be asked to answer three questions about what the speaker says in each talk. Select the best response to each question and mark the letter A, B, C, or D on your answer sheet. The talks will not be printed in your test book and will be spoken only one time. Questions 71 through 73 refer to the following talk. I will now start distributing the evaluation forms. Please take the time to write a thorough evaluation on this lecture. Your feedback is extremely important to us. I am constantly searching for ways to become more effective in what I do. So please answer honestly. It is completely anonymous. However, should you wish to write your name, you may do so. I am to leave the room while you are filling them out, so I've already asked June to collect all evaluations and return them to the administration office. Take all the time you need. Thank you. 71. What is the speaker passing out? 72. Why are the results important to the speaker? 73. What is true of the situation? 74 through 76 refer to the following news report. In the business world, Quest Communications said Tuesday that the U.S. Attorney's Office is investigating accounting issues that are also under scrutiny by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Quest previously acknowledged the Justice Department investigation, but said it didn't know the subject of the probe. The U.S. Attorney's Office requested that Quest make presentations similar to those that it made to the SEC. 74. What is true of this news report? 75. Who is to give a presentation? 76. What kind of problem is being reported? 77 through 79 refer to the following announcement. May I have your attention, please? Flight 418 departing at 8.12 p.m. to Lima is overbooked. If you have an assigned seat on this flight and would be willing to give it up, please approach the ticket counter immediately. You will be scheduled to leave on tomorrow's flight departing at 9.27 a.m. As compensation for your generosity, we will pay for your overnight accommodation and give you a free round trip to anywhere in the U.S. 77. 
Why are people being asked to give up their seats? 78. What will someone who gives up a seat get? 79. What time will someone who does not give up their seat leave? 80 through 82 refer to the following announcement. As the sole caregiver of my wife, a victim of Huntington's carrier disease, I am appalled by the President's resistance to full-fledged stem cell and therapeutic cloning research. Doctors say such cloning is the best chance for a cure of this horrible disease. That anyone would hinder or limit the research brings me to anger and tears. For the sake of my wife's life, and because the disease is genetic, the lives of our children and grandchildren, we must support stem cell and therapeutic research. Thank you for your time. 80. Who has Huntington's Correa disease? 81. What is the speaker's attitude toward the president's actions? 82. What is true of stem cell research? 83-85 Questions 83 through 85 refer to the following advertisement. Welcome to Doncaster Village. My name is Anne and I am the main realtor here. Here at Doncaster we have the best of all worlds. It has the feel of the country and the convenience of nearby schools, shopping, and places of worship. We offer hardwood floor and modern kitchens in your apartment or townhome, as well as great community benefits like tennis courts and a swimming pool. We offer a variety of floor plans ranging from one bedroom to three. Prices, of course, range accordingly. Now let's go over here and have a look at this two-bedroom townhome. 83. Who is the speaker addressing? 84. What is true of Doncaster Village? 85. What kind of apartment could you not buy at Doncaster Village? Questions 86 through 88 refer to the following talk. Now listen very carefully, because these steps will help make your yard the envy of the neighborhood. We all hate those dead shrubs, so let's get rid of them. To do so properly, place a hose at the base of the dead plant. Allow the water to run slowly for several hours or as long as overnight. Then loop a length of chain or heavy webbing strap around the base of the dead plant. Tie a bowline knot to attach the chain or webbing strap to a long length of nylon rope. Attach the nylon rope to the towing ring on a car. Start the car and pull forward slowly until the slack has been removed from the line. Pull forward slowly. The roots will pull easily from the wet soil. Slow is the operative word here. Take your time and let the forward motion of the car take the load. Chip and compost the dead shrub after it has been pulled from the ground. And that's all it takes. 86. For what is a speaker giving instructions? 87. What is the first step? 88. How should you drive the car? 89-91 Questions 89 through 91 refer to the following talk. Job fairs are extremely useful in that they afford you opportunities to speak with many employers at one time in one space. However, they are not for the shy or even the overly confident, for that matter. You need to make a good impression in person and look prepared. You're not necessarily learning about every opportunity in each organization. You are learning where the major hiring needs are. These are once-a-year events, so don't miss the ones you need. 
Along with fairs, I would also recommend looking at job listings online or in print. Of course, what is by far the most useful thing in job searching is good networking and knowing people in the desired field. Who you know doesn't necessarily outweigh what you know. However, it sure does play an important role. 89. Why are job fairs a good option? Ninety. What is the best way to obtain a job? Ninety-one. What is the speaker giving to the listeners? Questions ninety-two through ninety-four refer to the following news report. The entire west side of Lexington has been deemed a disaster area and will remain so for at least another week. Over 10,000 families have been without power since Sunday evening when the storm hit. All vehicles, with the exception of those used for emergencies, are asked to stay off the roads. The flooding and the hail from the storm toppled trees and electric power lines. Emergency shelters have been set up throughout the city. Police are currently doing all in their power to transport residents to these shelters. The shelters are crowded and full of anxious individuals, but heat and food are available to all. If you are interested in helping in any way, please call the hotline at 1-800-342-8439. 92. For how long will West Lexington be deemed a disaster area? 93. What vehicle cannot be on the road? 94. What is true of the emergency shelters? 95. Questions 95 through 97 refer to the following talk. Hollywood has now conquered the perfume world. They've all conquered movies, television and have produced platinum albums and they are joining forces with department stores to make us all smell a little bit better. Capturing all Hollywood themes, the stars are selling perfumes named Diamonds and Riches. When leafing through a perfume catalog, one might easily think they are reading their favorite tabloid. 95. Who are producing the perfumes? 96. What is a common theme of the perfume names? 97. Where can people read about the perfumes they want to buy? 98. Questions 98 through 100 refer to the following advertisement. It's amazing how powerful and useful the smallest products on the block can be. Namely, the new Tarjeta recently put on the market by Mel. This smart card, a plastic rectangle that looks like a standard credit card, contains a microprocessor, which transforms it into a mini-computer with impressive capabilities. A Tarjeta can keep track of travel reservations and tickets, hotel reservations and information, debit and credit cards, as well as electronic money. 98. What is the tarjeta? 99. What transforms the card? 100. Which of the following can the tarjeta hold? 100. That is the end of the test.